Well, I've had the sawmill for about three months now, assembled. Um, I had it a couple months before that, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys why I bought this one, what I like about it, and, uh, and what I don't like about it. It'll come in a nicely packaged steel crate. The head unit is about 50% assembled already, but it still took me by myself about eight hours to uh, assemble it. So may as well not plan on sawing anything on your first day. It's pretty straightforward assembly. Now I'm going to talk about why I chose this sawmill. First off was mainly the price. I think it was about $3,800 last summer. The reason I went with the HM126 instead of the 122 is because I think the 122 is only available with uh, the biggest engine is a 9 horse and I, this one came with a uh, 14 horse Kohler on it. And it comes standard comes standard with it, this uh, adjustable blade guide and the 122 comes with a fixed one or it's an add-on option to get the adjustable blade guide and I wanted the extra size, a couple bigger logs with it and the reason I didn't go with the 130 is because the price point really jumps up couldn't justify it to myself or my wife so I went with the 126 everything felt real heavy duty, I think this is galvanized some kind of coating on it anyway where it real tough it won't rest on you so let's get into the operations of this thing I really like the blade tensioner it's very simple this may be a normal option for sawmills I don't know I don't have any experience with others but the blade tensioner is very simple you just tighten it down until this uh, this piece is flush with the pipe so you just crank it down it's that simple. And when you're done, you want to loosen it back up so you don't get flat spots on your uh, belt. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. It's got a latch up here. A latch on either side down here. But one thing I want to show you guys, even with that latch and this latch, you still have this play right here and it vibrates. And it's kind of annoying, but I could put something rubber in there to, to dampen that. Just haven't done it. And you've got this screw you got to take out. Well, I really don't know what to show you guys in here. Um, it's just pretty straightforward, very simple. Got your uh, belt tightener right here. This is the pulley that moves back and forth to tighten your blade. This is your centrifugal clutch system right here. Well, while I'm here, another reason I chose Woodland Mills is because standard with their mills comes with automatic uh, lubrication. When you pull on your throttle, it pulls this, opens this valve, and uh, got your auto lube this mill it's got these uh, nylon bushings um, that slide up and down this rail and it actually slightly sticks when you let your head down and when you start sawing the vibration lets, lets it drop the last eighth of an inch or a little more three sixteenth and then your uh, board width is off but I mean that bre it'll break in with time I guess spray a little bit of silicone on these guides here and that seemed to fix the problem I'm sure this is a standard feature on the uh, sawmills, but it's got these cables that ride inside your wheel and keep them cleaned out. This is something I really wasn't sure about um, when I first got the mill, because I was hoping it, or I thought they had a clutch system so I could put a cordless drill on them and just buzz it up and down, but this actually works very well. Um, I'm happy with it. And another feature that might be standard with most sawmills, it comes with uh, two magnetic tape measures. I've not been too happy with this piece. I don't know. I have a hard time adjusting it smoothly and then uh, when I yeah I don't know. It works good. I usually just adjust the magnet up and down a bit. Get right on track. So you just pull top and bottom loose and then you can slide it. I find that more accurate than moving this up and down but it's there if you need it. And I like that it's got a aluminum lube tank, even though I don't know if that's any advantage over the plastic. It's got a simple cap that you pop off. Nice chain on it. And uh, that's a nice little detail. Looks good. Got your little uh, sight tube here to show you how full it is. It holds around three gallons. I went with the 14 horse engine just because of other reviews I've read or that I've seen online. And everybody recommended go with the biggest motor that's available for that sawmill so I went with the, with the 14 horse but one thing I didn't do is I did not get a track extension with this 
because uh, my father-in-law's got some steel that I can use to make a track extension and I still haven't done it. So if you've got the money, just go ahead and spend the 400 bucks on your extra track extension. I think you'll find that it's worth it. It comes standard at the 3800 or whatever I gave for it with a uh, enough track for a 10 foot 5 inch log. I find that in reality it's more like 10 feet max. I don't know how you could get a 10 foot 5 log on here, but that's what it's advertised for. Now one thing I really don't care about is this slot here where the sawdust goes out. It doesn't make the sawdust go straight down like other brands of sawmills do. Instead it blows it out in like a five foot pattern here which makes it almost impossible to clean up unless you've got a lot of sawdust. So I saw on another video where somebody would hang a, a license plate I think on there and it would hit the license plate and go straight down so I'll probably do something like that eventually. Now it is my intention to build a stand for this to get it up off the ground and a building for it. Now I thought I had the stand built already and I haven't even started on it. So I'm not really sure when that's going to happen, hopefully soon. And when you build a stand you actually go and flip this handle down and put this, uh, this handle on the other side that way because it's going to be higher. So it's got, yeah, it's got everything you need to have it high or when you put it low. Well, Woodland Mills uh, did a good job idiot proofing this. They went and made these this thing so when you go hey, your blade hitting your log stop that this thing would but promptly like within the first day the, there's a set screw in the back that actually holds this and I guess it just vibrated out and fell out and I actually did hit a log stop uh, because you know it wasn't idiot proofed anymore. So one of you guys, uh, John Woody, told me about this method that he uses and he just uses a oak log stop. I could just go get another set screw, but I like this idea. Well, what else is there to say? This is a solid built sawmill, and if you're wanting to get one, just go ahead and get one and tell your wife at least it's not drugs. I'm not going to end the video right here because no sawmill video would be complete without sawing up a log.